morning uh, in this video i'm showing uh, how to set up uh, a simulation with the crystal plasticity and the cohesive element for intergranular fracture using moose framework and uh, napper okay so napper will be used to to generate uh, the polycrystal and then the we will combine some examples existing examples in moose uh, to uh, model the crystal plasticity together with the uh, with the cohesive element. Okay. So first of all, I assume that you have already installed uh, most framework and the Napper, and you can launch them from from command line. Okay. So we start with uh, with the Napper actually. Um, so I have a folder and and uh, some instruction already written. So first of all, I want to generate a uh, a uh, um, polycrystal okay so let me first remove the, the previous file um, and then uh, the the generation of, of a polycrystal is based on the tessellation module so i run an aper minus t and then the number of grain and then the type of of domain okay so in this case a cube of of size 10 This one is going to generate the tessellation file. Okay, it's a file which contains the information on the morphology of the of the polycrystal. Okay. So then I need to use the, the mesh module to create a mesh. And to do this I go I go to the manual. And there is going to be a meshing module. Um, I think the com the command is quite easy, is snapper um, minus m and then you need to put the, the name of <coughs> the name of the polycrystal file and then there are some options for instance I wanna uh, select the, the, the type uh, of element and the size of element so to do so I think I need to put the option health type okay and then in this case I'm gonna make a uh, hexahedra health type x and then I'm gonna select the, the size so specific specify the absolute or relative characteristic length okay uh, actually now that I think it's better if we use tetrahedra because then I'm gonna get a more flat grain boundary um, and then minus CL uh, say 1.0 because my, my cube is 10 I want an element which is approximately 1 okay so let's try this one it's gonna take a bit of time And then it's done. Okay, so we've got the mesh. So this one is a is a G mesh file. It contains all the um, all the information about the nodes and elements. Uh, the thing I noticed with Napper is that there are no no boundary for the boundary condition. So we will add them um, manually. No, I think I think there may be. So there are boundary called x zero, x one, y zero, y one. Oh, there is something let's see um, okay so this is the mesh okay that, that we are going to use and, and the mousse is going to generate the cohesive element automatically at the, at the grain boundary so let's see let's see how, how, how mousse works so um, we, I'm, I'm in the mousse folder okay this is the mousse folder I'm gonna check in the tensor mechanic module and the test okay so first of all, I want to start with the crystal plasticity without um, any any cohesive zone model. So I go in the folder crystal plasticity. There are several several formulation here. Uh, the one I like more is the stress update based material. It's one of the latest, most convenient to use. Uh, and then I pick I pick just uh, uh, one of one of the examples. So for instance, this one called uh, 
sub step maybe uh, let's see what the, what what this contains okay this one looks uh, uh, suitable I think so I'm gonna copy these this uh, sub step file to my to my working directory um, I'm gonna rename it maybe we call it polycrystal uh, with uh, cohesive zone model okay and now let's let's go through these uh, through this file so First of all, there are global parameters represented as placement. That's that's fine. Now, what we need to do is to change the mesh to our mesh, okay? Because th this one is going to create a one-element mesh, and uh, um, it's not what we want to do, right? So, in order to to uh, import the mesh, we need to we need to find some um, some example doing so. So, if I go back to the um, Moose folder. I think I go. I go to the uh, framework, and uh, if I go in the source code, there are uh, some type of object called uh, um, mesh generators. Okay, so mesh generators. The one, the one that are we are interested in is, is the is the one for reading um, an external mesh. So I think it's called uh, um, never remember about that. Um, so it's, it's it's best I think if we if you actually go in the test. So I go in the test the tests, and I I, I search for somewhere where the, the G mesh has been imported. So I grab. Um, msh dot msh and I'm gonna find a fair amount of example where th this has been has been done so if I go in the last one for instance mesh modifier break mesh by block and then 3d and then test break uh, mesh polycrystal this one is an example okay so in this example you can see that th there is a there is a um, not a block called the file mesh generator and this is exactly what what I want to do so I go back to my file and I, I change the generated mesh into this one okay so now um, I am reading uh, I'm using an object of type a file mesh generator and I am reading a file which is called n10 id1 is this one okay so I'm gonna change the name here and this one is gonna uh, import my my mesh okay so what, once once I import my mesh, the, the rest of the file is basically the the standard crystal plasticity formulation. So um, there is basically this block, this aux variable are gonna output my uh, the strength of the slip system, the strain along a particular direction, the plastic deformation gradient. The the tensor mechanic block, this one is just telling me that um, we we are solving for the stress equilibrium. Okay, while the aux kernel are the one that fill the aux variable. Okay. Now the, the boundary condition need to be changed here at this point because uh, as we saw in the in the mesh file, uh, the name of the boundary have changed. And now they are called x0, x1, y0, y1, and this correspond to the positive and negative uh, phase along the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis respectively. So I'm gonna try to change uh, uh, this one. So the, the one that was the bottom, so it's the one where I fix uh, ui to zero, is now gonna be y zero, okay. And the left, which is the one where I fix ux equal to zero, is now gonna be x zero, okay. Same for z, back is gonna be z zero, 
in front is gonna be z1 so i am applying um, a, a, a displacement parallel uh, to the to the um, uh, uh, parallel to the z axis and and it's in the positive z direction okay. this one is the function so uh, t is time and then the displacement is going to be 0 0.01 multiplied by time okay the, the material we are not going to change this because this one is the is the standard uh, crystal plasticity model okay uh, there are a few a few parameters that you can see here because most of most of the parameters are uh, already defined in the in the base class but it's useful at least to uh, be aware of what we are doing in term of of yield strength so here you see the there is the elasticity tensor is expressed in in megapascal okay and then um, if i go looking in this object in the crystal plasticity calidindi update um, this one is going to be in, in the in the tensor mechanic but i'm going to search for it um, if you look in this code there is a uh, i'm not going to describe this model in detail but uh, basically the um, this one called the gss initial so the initial lattice friction strength of the material is set to six to about 60 megapascal okay so this one i i just explicitly uh, write this one here just to understand uh, which type of of yield strength I'm gonna I'm gonna expect okay so yeah I write uh, again 60.8 like in the in the code and this is my GSS initial okay uh, the post processor here are not particularly useful they are they are used to print some variable which are the uh, element average value so the, the average of, of this quantity over the element and the solver as well um, I may not may not change anything here I can change a bit this this tolerances that look very very strict I said 10 to minus 8 and the total time is going to give you the strain so uh, because the um, yeah here there is number of step um, so I, I can use it it's more clear I think if I use the option and and the time and then if if and time is 10 then it means my total displacement will be uh, 0 0.1 and the mesh is the block is is uh, as, a, as a size of 10 so it's gonna apply um, a strain of 1% okay that's the idea and the time step maybe two is a bit too too big it may apply i don't know one just for starting then we see we see how it goes this one is is a, is a crystal plasticity simulation without any 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 cohesive element um, we can just check if if uh, uh, moose can recognize the the, the boundary uh, so first of all i i I, I run uh, I run moose so uh, in, in this case I'm using I'm using a, a, a um, uh, there are several ways to, to run moose because in this case I'm, I'm not using any any uh, uh, custom custom code so the the, the first thing you, you will do is is to check that you have um, uh, an executable uh, that has compiled all the module so if you go in the module yeah um, and, and then then you, you you can check that uh, you, you have you have uh, you, you see here I don't, I don't have a specific opt executable so what what i do i'm writing this in the instruction um, i go here so i cd this and then i i, I apply make okay because make is gonna is gonna create an executable for me otherwise if you if you uh, if you already have uh, the, the one called creating an application so if you have a moose application and this application has, has uh, you have run make on this by by compiling all the module you need to enable the module then it means you have a, you have an executable which link to all the module but now i can create uh, one by making this one and uh, the, the idea is that i have already 
di cos'è vorrei di uh, compiled this module this one is gonna be quick but normally normally this will take um, quite quite a lot of time okay um, you see it, it, it's linking the executable actually in the in the combined uh, folder so if you go to the combined yeah you, you will see there is a combined opt this one is the executable so just just to write in the instruction um, one is, is because I use the 8 processor and if it's the first time that you do this make you should expect uh, that the, the compilation takes quite a lot of time okay um, okay so um, at, the, at this point uh, the, you, you can run the, the simulation by, by simply using this pointing to this executable combined opt so I go back to my to my um, temporary folder and I run um, let's say I'm trying try to run in par to run in parallel so you need to pick the, um, the the right executable it's combined opt minus i and then polycrystal with czm so let's let's see if this one works or not especially if it recognized the, the boundary from, from the mesh okay. okay so as you see the following node ID does not exist on the mesh this one is a, is a, is a problem that you may end up as well um, the main problem is that it seems like the, the boundaries that are generated by, by Napper are not often recognized by, uh, by Moose, which is not the case if you generate um, your own GMesh. So to, to, to solve this problem, um, it's quite easy. You can use a, another mesh modifier, okay? which I'm gonna show you. So if you go to the Moose folder, to the framework, um, uh, actually no I go to the test the test um, and uh, th there will be um, some some uh, example of mesh modifier and there is one which is uh, about adding uh, a node set which represent the boundary uh, using a, a boundary box yeah so there is this one called the boundary box node set if you look at one example uh, there is this syntax here uh, so but it says bounding box and then there is an input um, the name of a new boundary and, and top right and bottom left so what, now let's copy this block which, which is needed in our case and see how what is the meaning of this so first of all you, you have uh, you have this one you can you can call it with the uh, with, with the name of the surface you, you want to create uh, say I want to create um, the, the first one in the boundary so x0 okay uh, and I, I need, you need to take an input which is a, a, a mesh object so you, you take file so you always take the the, imp the input as the previous one okay then the new boundary is going to be called x0 okay um, just just to be less redundant this one is you can say create x0 okay and top right and bottom left imagine they are vertices uh, of, of a uh, boundary box and you need to set these vertices in a way that they uh, they include the uh, the face so for instance because my my uh, cube is is um, uh, as dimension 10 and they start from zero um, I would say bottom left I will I will I will pick minus 0 0.01 there, there are several several solutions it's not only one but this mi minus 0, 0 0.1 means that so if I if I go for um, an explanation so there is x axis um, y axis and z axis and then i've got a cube okay um, the cube is going to is 
is, go is going to have a, a face x0 so x0 is the one at the bottom okay uh, no sorry uh, x0 is is, uh, is this one and, th and then I need to create a bounding box so the bounding box is is a uh, bounding box is going to is going to have uh, let me select another color um, bounding box is gonna have a point here which is minus uh, this one minus 0 0.01 minus 0 0.01 minus 0 0.01 and then I need to select another point in a way the, the corresponding bounding box include the surface so it's gonna be here right because then then you create a sort of bounding box That is is just around the so imagine is a, is a is a box which contain the face, uh, but at the same time it should not be too extended along x. Otherwise you include because this one is a node set that you are generating. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's all. So if 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 you think about this carefully, you will end up with with the idea that this is really just about uh, increasing this value along x so between minus 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 you you get this point and this point and then because the, the face along y and z is pretty large you're gonna write 10.1 and 10.1 and you're gonna do exactly the same for generating all the others so uh, I'm gonna generate y0 um, and the input in this case is gonna be create x0 and this is the new boundary is going to be called y0 and th this is exactly the, the same principle so you're going to write um, in the y coordinate it's going to be from minus 0 0.01 to 0 0.01 and the others are going to be from minus 0 0.01 to 10.1 uh, 10 we can actually say 10.01 so we are more accurate in selecting this, this surface okay and then I go ahead I create z0 and uh, this one is gonna be create uh, y0 and then new boundary z0 okay and this one I apply the same principle so it's gonna in the z coordinate is gonna go from minus 0 0.01 to 0 0.01 and this one is gonna be from minus 0 0.01 to 10.01 the, the last one we need is I think uh, we need the Z1 uh, which maybe is slightly more it's just about translating so Z1 is, is uh, just the same as uh, create Z0 but I need to translate along Z okay. so this one you create Z1 and, and uh, um, the way it works is that you, you just take the, the last two uh, figures and you, you translate uh, by 10 substantially so this one is going to become 10.01 and this one is going to become uh, 9.99 okay and the idea is that in this z1 you, you are picking this surface so you are effectively um, creating a, a box around this one okay a bit messy here but it's a box around the, the Z0 surface okay Z1 surface so. uh, yeah that's all this should be able to create the boundary now I run it again see what it does
I, I stop. I'm gonna try to, to generate um, uh, a mesh that is, is a bit is a bit coarser because otherwise it's gonna take really a lot of time. Um, so let me repeat the procedure. Uh, we, we keep the same tessellation, but I cancel the, the mesh and just for this demonstration I try um, a mesh size of uh, which is maybe two instead of one. Okay. So it's gonna have uh, less element. It's just the same size, so you, you see you can smoothly uh, change the, the element size without um, uh, without uh, any any issue. And now now you, you get you get something that has, has less uh, less element. Okay. And, but the, the input file will not change because the name of the mesh is the same and the size of the uh, the box is the same. Maybe I can reduce a bit the uh, the accuracy set to 10 to minus 6 just for this demo, so it goes a bit faster. Okay. Now let's see.
after the mesh because this let's try to um, reduce the mesh again maybe we set length 3 this time okay now we should have got something with only yeah, 340 nodes and then also maybe better to reduce the time step to 0 0.1 okay Let's see how it goes and the dt mean don't forget to uh, make a dt mean which is consistent with the with the time step okay so let's see now stopping here the, uh, the simulation and show you the results I, I assume you are familiar with Paraview Paraview is for visualization okay uh, you can you can pick the, the output file dot e if you apply you can see your polycrystal okay you go you got a polycrystal uh, looks looks pretty nice um, and then if you you can look at your displacement field uh, and there, there is going to be uh, a displacement applied along um, along z and you, you should be able already to see uh, a bit of the heterogeneity in the in the stress um, especially if you, and in the strain as well yeah you can see the strain is pretty much heterogeneous yeah uh, this one is a, is a pretty coarse mesh but enough just for this demo uh, so this is uh, yeah if you look at the stress level in just one time step it's, it's really small uh, you know uh, but now we'll do we'll do the the cohesive element um, so keep in mind the cohesive element will require us to provide some some fracture uh, strength so we, we need to have a, an order of magnitude of what we expect so if you want an example of of cohesive in the in the in the most folder you can go to the module and then tensor mechanics and then uh, test uh, tests and then there will be a folder called cohesive zone model okay there are a lot of example here uh, i'm gonna pick this one by linear mixed so let's see what are the features so first of all there is uh, there is a uh, um, there is a split uh, split block which is the break mesh uh, by block generator okay i'm gonna set this one uh, just just after the the file mesh generator okay so you need to uh, link the various blocks so this, the input of this one is gonna be file um, and then uh, the 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 input of the next is gonna be the split okay so you, you need to make a chain in which the input of each block is, is the previous block. Okay. So break mesh by block is just going to uh, take my polycrystal and, and split the mesh by crystal by crystal by, and then creating the, the cohesive interface. Okay. Very, very convenient. Just one block that does everything. Uh, and, and, uh, and then what the, the other features that are needed are the... Um, um, so this, this one is the standard tensor mechanic module that we already have the boundary conditions are gonna remain the same and then you need another uh, the, the tensor mechanic action okay so tensor mechanic action is, is a block 
basically similar to the uh, one for tensor mechanic but is going this is going to um, apply to, to create the cohesive the cohesive uh, interface and to apply the constitutive law of the cohesive interface to the residual equation okay to the stress equilibrium equation and this one you don't need to modify anything uh, here it says interface boundary interface means you consider all the interfaces otherwise you can specify uh, specific boundary if you want to but in this case we consider all the interfaces because we are interested in the uh, fracture at, at the grain boundary and then you need to give the material property which is this CZM material property of the of the cohesive element okay so I'm adding this block here so uh, we don't go through the detail of this but basically the uh, the normal strength is going to be the, the normal stress that you need to open the, the cohesive interface so for this demo we set it very low okay we, and the, the shear the, the same is the, is the shear that is needed for uh, opening the interface uh, this one I'm setting it very low because I want it to fail very early so I really put like 50 megapascal which is, is very low normally it will be much higher in a real material but uh, it's even below it's even below the GSS initial so it's, it's just a bit, maybe even below yield but for this uh, for this uh, demonstration I just set it very low so it fails quickly okay and uh, uh, normally you will set it uh, based on the fracture strength of your material so G, G, G1C and G2C uh, need to be uh, interpreted as the, the uh, fracture energy so if you if you divide this G1C by normal strength you will find the, the failure uh, the elongation of the boundary to failure uh, which is normal it should normally be set uh, based on the element size I don't, I don't enter in the detail of the theory here but uh, normally I would like to set this as similar to the normal strength okay so in this case I write 50 and 50 in order to avoid uh, an excessive elongation of the of the cohesive interface uh, I think that's it there is no other uh, yeah it's, it's very simple actually there's no nothing else needed okay so you just add this this uh, particular um, block for the material then the solver is going to be the same um, we need to wait a few time step to see the failure here because uh, before we were reaching about 10 megapascal now we need to reach 50 uh, but overall it's just about adding this material adding the, the action for the cohesive zone master and adding the, the break mesh by block and this one is a fully coupled crystal plasticity with cohesive element interfaces so let's see how it runs if it runs uh, yeah this is searching for a coupled variable called the specs so let's see uh, let's go back one moment to the, to the example to see uh, probably some some names are not given uh, properly I think yeah it's because here the displacement is called the dispex disp y while in our example we are calling it ux ui I think we can just we can just change this name um, yeah it shouldn't be a big deal we just change this uh, uh, displacement name let's see let's see if it works so there's gonna be this pex, this y, and this set. Uh, I think you can change this name in the cohesive uh, um, element, but let, let's change them globally. Um, so this pex, this y, and then and then uh, um, I think they only appear in the boundary condition. So I, this one is gonna be this y. This one is gonna be this pex. This one is gonna be this z. And this one is going to be this Uh Yeah, I forgot to say the, the one have the input input uh, uh, slip system that I already have here for some reason. Uh, if you if you don't f this file, you you can find this file in in the most folder. is is the file that contain uh, the the slip system of the FCC in this case. Uh, it's 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 inside the the. 
crystal plasticity example in the mousse folder and you can just search for this name input slipsis and you're gonna find it okay so let's give a go now Okay, see. Uh, a, f a few